Hello, everyone in AP Music Theory World. In this session today, I'm going to be talking about free response question number seven. And I think this is probably considered a, a rather difficult question, but I hope that I can show you some things today that will really help simplify this. And so let's get started with uh, what we're going to be talking about. And so what will we learn? I call this demystifying free response question seven. I think it's a step-by-step -step process. It has reliable formulas that, that you can plug in I think what we have to do is be sure we understand the task, what we're expected to do in this question. I really like to connect the written and the oral, and I'll show you how I try and do that. And I wanna make some suggestions to you about it for you. You have to understand common practice harmonic progression and very important, writing cadences. You've got to understand how to write cadences. And we want to use an economy of harmonic materials. It's kind of like me playing golf. If I go to the golf course, I, I have a great set of clubs. The only problem is I can't hit every one of them really well. So I would probably do better if I just used a putter and a wedge and a five iron and that's what I'm going to suggest to you about these three chords, the three most important chords, the one, the four, and the five. These are the primary triads in tonal music. So the question is, can you harmonize a melody mostly using these three chords? Can you use mostly root position chords? We want in this question to work to make the complex simple. And we can do that by using reliable formulas to create simple endings. And those most common endings are authentic and half cadences. I'll, I'll talk about uh, probably the deceptive cadence in a little while, but I'm just gonna tell you right now you really don't want to use a deceptive cadence in this exercise. So let's look at an, at an example today. And, and later, after we've looked at this example, we're going to practice one together. OK, so this is the most recent free response question seven. This is from 2021. And uh, you can see that uh, it is a given melody. This is harmonization of a melody. And um, the, the start here portion tells you where you have to start writing the bass line to go with that melody and the harmonization using Roman numerals. The fermatas indicate the phrases. So that's the example. Let's talk about it some. Here are the instructions for FR7. And look at this, look at this. The suggested time is 20 minutes. So you want to maybe spend a little less time doing this. And that's what I'm going to try and show you is how you can conserve time and get this done and maybe allow yourself a little, little more time for uh, one of the part writing exercises that you might have a little bit more uh, trouble with for, for something for some reason. And so uh, I'm gonna show you how to do this in less than 20 minutes. Here are the instructions. Complete the baseline for the melody below following 18th century voice leading procedures. Below the baseline, write the Roman and Arabic numerals that indicate the harmonies and inversions implied by the soprano and bass. And then of course it gives you some suggestions uh, I don't worry too much about keeping the portion you compose consistent with the first phrase. It's going to happen if you uh, 
follow the formulas and 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 the ideas that we're presenting. Uh, first and foremost, write an appropriate cadence at each phrase ending. And you have to write a perfect authentic cadence at, at the final cadence. You want to try and give some melodic interest to the bass line. Bass lines are probably more disjunct than the soprano line, which is more conjunct and stepwise, but bass lines can be stepwise too. Uh, and then it talks about embellishing tones not being required. Be careful if you decide to use an embellishing tone because sometimes that can just get you into more trouble by using it than if you just kept them out. When I'm working with my students, I, I really don't allow them to use embellishing tones because you don't need to. Uh, vary the motion. We're talking about contrary motion, oblique motion, where one voice stays the same, the other moves up and down, and of course, similar motion. And you have to be careful with similar motion that you don't create uh, unacceptable parallels. Number four, use mostly quarter notes. Uh, although if you, if you can't seem to make a quarter to uh, all quarter notes work, you can write half notes some places. And then of course, on the narration, they say, do not notate alto and tenor lines. Well, uh, okay. But I mean, if you if an alto or a tenor note might help help you with your harmonization, it's not the end of the world. All right, so step one, let's write the cadences. And here we go. So free response question seven consists of four phrases, each two measures in length for a total of eight measures. The end of each of the four phrases is notated with a fermata, Let's begin with the fourth phrase. Since tonal music concludes with a perfect authentic cadence, the fourth phrase of free response question seven, it, it always include, concludes with a PAC, perfect authentic cadence at measure eight. That's a requirement. Typical melodies at this final cadence are mi, re, do, or three, two, one, mi, re, do, or do, ti, do, one, seven, one. Okay, that's those are very common melodies at that final cadence. Work backwards. We're going to write those cadences first. Let's talk about the authentic cadence. And I always want my students to write the two chords of the cadences in root position. So uh, most of the time. Uh, you know, you're going to have authentic cadences that that potentially can be perfect if tonic is in the one chord in the highest voice. But here are some melody examples. So we talked about mi, re, do, and do, ti, do. If I see mi, re, do, or do, ti, do in the soprano, in the melody, I immediately write a one six four, which is called a cadential six four, and I'll I'll show you another notation for that chord in just a few moments uh, when we do our practice uh, a, a little later, I should say. Going to a five or a five seven to a one, I don't think very hard on it. If I see me re, me, me re do, I write one six four five to one and write so so do in the bass line. If it's la ti do or re re do, you can use a two or a two in first inversion to a five or five seven to a one. If it's la ti do or do ti do, you could also use four to five or five seven to one. You can just plug these in. You don't have to think very hard if you've done your memory work and you understand how these cadences are working. For the half cadence, I put cadences in order of common use. So the authentic cadences are probably first in line and then come half cadences. The melody examples for half cadence, me to re, do to re, up to re, and do down to t would suggest a one chord to a five chord. 
I always say the half cadence ends on a five sensibly approached. Okay, how is it sensibly approached? Well, in this case, with me to ray and do up to ray and do down to T, it would be a one chord because do and me are members of the one chord. If it's ray down to T, ray T, then it could be a two chord or a two in first inversion. At a cadence point, I would write root position two to five. In, through the progression, you might somewhere encounter a place where you would need and want to use a two in first inversion. And then of course, in this question, we, we are going to have a chromatic note. And the objective is, do you understand secondary function? And so probably it's going to be a raised fourth scale degree, phi to so, and that would suggest a five of five going to a five, a half cadence. So the melodic endings, mi, re, do, or do, ti, do, each provide a good place for a cadential 6-4 chord. If a cadential 6-4 chord is appropriate, that's what you have to watch out for, because if it's not mi, re, do, or do, ti, do, it's going to be one of those other ones. But if it is appropriate, the bass line is going to be so, so, do, and the bass note will need to be doubled in the cadential 6-4 chord. This has fingers right, right out to your part writing, too. Uh, if it's a, if, if you can, if it's in the Roman numeral exercise, question six, it might ask for a, a secondary dominant chord, uh, or, it, or at the cadence point, it might suggest a cadential six, four. So, you know, those, those are possibilities. And uh, so I can, if, if it's a mi, re, do, or a do, ti, do ending in, in this question, question seven, I can do that in 30 seconds. So 30 seconds out of the 20 minutes, just to write uh, so, so, do in the bass and a one, six, four, five to one as the harmonization. Other typical melodic endings at the final cadence might be, we've already mentioned it, re, re, do, or la, ti, do. In the chart that I presented earlier, remember we said la, ti, do, equals a two to a five to a one, or a four to a five to a one. My first choice always is two to five to one, if it's possible. And it is uh, re, fe, re fa la, you know, the, the la is in the two chord. Uh, a re re do melodic ending is two five one. That one could also be a five to a five seven to a one. So you just have to use the five and the five seven, not just two triad fives in a row. Uh, and that, that would work well. Uh, and then the other one that we showed in the chart, la ti do or do ti do, that, that could be a four five one as already mentioned uh, er, earlier there. Okay, so let's ask the question, is it an authentic cadence or a half cadence? If the cadence is authentic, does it involve a cadential 6-4 chord? If not, what chords will be appropriate? Write the two chords of each cadence in reposition. And here's the note that I wanted to bring your attention, bring to your attention. In 18th century chorale style, a fermata indicating the end of a phrase is not an appropriate place for an for an inconclusive deceptive cadence. So please don't write one in this exercise. You're only gonna write authentic and half cadences. So I like to start at the end of the piece. This, this is measure eight, okay? The melody of phrase four. And this particular melody in 2021 ended with la, ti, do. So, a cadential 6-4 is not possible here. Either a 2 to a 5 to a 1 or a 4 to a 5 to a 1 should be used to create the perfect authentic cadence. So I've written there, you can see, 
five to one in root position and do or the F, we're in F major, is in the highest voice in the one chord. I also tried to uh, go in contrary motion. The, the C up to the F actually is in similar motion, but it's a very common movement in cadential points like this. I chose two, five, one, because I just like that sound a lot. Two, five, one, like that, and la, ti, do, together. So that, that, that cadence right there is probably already worth, it's hedging on two points just for doing that cadence, all right? Going on, next, complete the cadence that includes a chromatic note. All right, in this particular case, the chromatic note, usually at least, is a raised fourth scale degree, which creates phi to sol in the melody. This pitch suggests a secondary dominant chord, five of five to five. And the pitch preceding the phi to sol will normally indicate a one or a two or a four. By completing the cadence and the harmony preceding it, this second phrase will be finished and it's worth two points. So let's take a look. Here's the chromaticized cadence. And you can see there the phi to the soul in the melody and it's soul phi soul, the, the C where under the start here arrow is a soul. And so we put the five of five to five. By the way, that B natural, is actually the third of the chord. So the root of the 505 is G and it moves down in contrary motion to the C, which is the root of the five chord, okay? C, E, G, we're in the key of F major, remember. And so that C in the melody under the start here is a C and it certainly fits in the one chord. It doesn't fit in the two or the four chord. So this works out perfectly. And that bass line, it's, it's a little disjunct, but it really works out nicely. If I start the beginning of the second phrase, do, so, la, fa, do, re, so, that's a pretty nice bass line to go along with that. Now, typically what I do is I try and sing that melody to myself. Uh, so do, mi, fa, mi, I have to change the key a little bit because that's going to be too high for me. Mi fa so do la so fi so. Okay. And so that so fi so indicates that one five of five to a five. Next, continuing on writing the cadences, the third phrase is usually a half cadence or an imperfect authentic cadence. If the melody of the phrase ends on re or t, don't think twice, don't think even hardly a second, it will be a half cadence. So write a five chord in root position, then approach it sim sensibly, usually again with a one chord or a two or a four chord. The reason I say two or four together is because remember the two chord and the four chord have two notes in common with each other. So sometimes it can't be a two. Sometimes uh, it can't be, a, a, probably it can be a four a lot of the time, but sometimes the, the two is not possible because it doesn't have the root. It, it, it starts with the four root. Okay. So if the melody of the phrase ends on me or soul, it will be an imperfect authentic cadence, so write five to one in root position. So see, these are reliable formulas, I'll call them, that you can plug in and it doesn't take long. This though is memory work for you, but it's very important memory work and very worthwhile. It will save you a ton of time, okay? So here's the third phrase and notice, the third phrase ends on T. I don't think very hard at all. I put a five under it and 
in root position, we're in F major, the fifth scale degree is C. So I, I chose to write it up there and maybe uh, I'll be able to connect from the beginning of the phrase with that in a good way. You could put it down in second space, space clef, uh, but I chose to try to connect to it up there in this particular case. Okay. And so now we're done with the cadences. So step two is completing phrases three and four. And remember, we've already finished two because the first half is given to us. And then we completed the cadence plus the, the chord before the uh, half cadence, the five of five to five. So now let's complete phrases three and four. Here are some ideas for you. Keep it simple. Use mostly tonic and dominant chords. These chords are about all you will need. A one, maybe a one in first inversion. And, and I wanna say something about inversions right here. Stay away from six fours, except for the cadential six four, unless you really know what you're doing. In the previous session that I showed you, we talked about score reading skills and those skills also apply here. So if you don't know how to use a passing six four chord, if you don't know how to use a neighboring or pedal six four, if you don't know how to, how to use an arpeggiating six four, please don't write them in this question. Just use first inversion chords. That would be my suggestion to you. If you stick with first inversion chords, you will probably be okay. But if you start trying to throw in a six four chord, uh, we have a joke about the three chord, you know, because every once in a while someone writes a three minor six four. Oh my goodness, please don't do that. Uh, because we'll, that, that is not a good chord. And by the way, you don't see the three chord here and you don't see the seven diminished chord here. I just stay away from those when I am completing question seven. So the one, the one in, maybe in first inversion, the two and maybe in first inversion, the four, the five, uh, and then of course the secondary dominant, the five, you could, you could call it a five, seven if you wanted to. You're only writing the bass line, so you're not writing four parts in this particular question, the five of five. And then I parenthesize the six because I'll tell you, I try and not use that chord unless I have to. I'm gonna stick with ones, fours, and fives, but the six chord sometimes is the exactly right chord for a certain point in the melody. So the, uh, don't think that, oh no, I can't use a six chord. I don't mean that. I just mean probably stick with ones, fours, and fives, and maybe the two, you've got to have the five of five for the chromaticized uh, cadence. Set up each cadence with a preparation chord. We've already talked about this. If the melody allows, write a cadential six, four before five to one. It didn't allow in 2021 in that particular melody. Use one or two or four before a five or a five of five. Create progressions that follow this model phrase pattern, tonic, predominant, dominant, and tonic. If you can do that, and I mean, it doesn't always go in that exact order. Sometimes you might go tonic, dominant, and back to tonic. Sometimes you might go tonic, predominant, dominant, ending on a half cadence. But try and keep this pattern in mind. Here, here are some more suggestions. If you can start the third and fourth phrase, phrases each with a root position one chord, that's a great option. If you can't start it with a one, you can always uh, use second option, a five chord. Five likes to go to one. Fours like to go to two and one or five. Two likes to go to five. 
And if you're going two to five, the potential for, for unacceptable parallels goes down a lot. The third bullet, use plenty of contrary motion between the bass and soprano voices. And we'll talk about that as we go through. Pay attention to notes on the strong beats. Avoid seventh chords. You don't need them for this exercise. And I've already talked about this some. Don't use 6-4 chords other than the cadential 6-4 and maybe the passing 6-4, but be sure you understand how the passing 6-4 chord works. Okay, so let's complete phrase three. And uh, so in that first measure, I followed the pattern exactly because I could write a one to a four to a five and back to a one. So, do, la, so, fa, mi. So, one, four, five, one. And that's tonic, predominant, dominant to tonic. Okay. And then we want to complete the next measure. And I, I move to the predominant chord four. And then fours like to go to two, remember. And in this case, uh, we could have gone down to the G, but making that in first inversion, that two minor chord in first inversion really sounds nice. So do, fa, so, do, fa, fa, so. And it goes very nicely with that fa, let's see. Uh, Fa mi re do, fa mi re do. Oh, I, I'm sorry, I can't do. Fa mi re do ti. Finally, I got it. Took me a minute, okay? Because I'm not really probably singing in the key of F. I'm just singing in the key that I can sing in right now with my range, okay? And then look at this. We have four more chords to write if we're gonna use all quarter notes. And here again, um, this is where I I decided this is a really great opportunity to put a six chord in there. So I went do do la so fa do re so do, and it it worked out really well. Six sixes go to fours, fours go to one, and then the two to five to one for the cadence. So I think following the tonic, predominant, dominant, tonic phrase pattern can really, if you're thinking in those terms, you're going to come out really, really pretty well. Now, looking at these two phrases, I, I used a lot of contrary motion between the first, in, in the third phrase, contrary between the first to the second chord, contrary second to the third chord. It went similar motion, from the five to the five chord to the one chord beats three and four in that that first measure of the third phrase, uh, and then it went similar motion again, but then it's oblique motion and contrary motion. So most of it was contrary motion, some an oblique motion, and two similar motion movements. In the last phrase, it's contrary, 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 contrary. Everything's contrary motion between the soprano and bass, except the last two chords, the five to the one at the cadence point. And that's in similar motion and a very common movement for a PAC. All right. So that's what it looks like. There's the complete, the complete uh, response for question seven in 2021. And I'm going to go ahead, you, you won't get to do this on the AP test, but I'm going to go ahead and play this one. I really think that's that's a really nice baseline to go with that melody, if I do say so myself. <laughs> 
And uh, I, I think that it follows those reliable, we used reliable formulas, things went where they were supposed to. I mean, we didn't have any retrogressions in the harmony. We didn't use a three chord. So, I mean, this this is really, I, I don't know what the score would be, but this, this might not be, uh, this question is a nine point question, but really it's, it's like an eight point question with a pretty point. If it's really, if you really were able to get a little fancier than I did there, you would probably get the pretty point as it's called. And, uh, but this, this, I am certain this probably would make an eight. Uh, and, and maybe somebody would think it was pretty. I think it's a good baseline myself. All right, so if we go a couple of final notes, a chord matrix. Now, I, I throw this out to you because maybe this could help speed things up as far as knowing what chord contains a certain melody note. I don't use this to try and decide what chord I'm going to write. I think about the model phrase. and uh, um, But you could write a chord matrix. And then just to be sure, oh, well, is, is E in the five chord or that sort of thing, then you could see pretty quickly. And when you write a chord matrix, uh, I'm going to show you uh, in the final session, session eight, when we're talk when we're going to be talking about the two part writing questions too, because I have my students write out a chord matrix like this to help them be sure that they spell the chords correctly. And so uh, you do this by writing this out in alpha. So F, G, A, B flat, C, D, E, and then go up to the third of the tonic chord, A, B flat, C, D, and so on. And it, it, you can do this in 30 seconds. So again, it doesn't take you long. Uh, the second bullet, don't get fancy. Keep it simple. If you do, you can probably complete this question in about 12 minutes rather than the suggested 20 minutes, leaving yourself, of course, more time for free response questions five and six. Five, six, and seven, those questions are all timed at 35 minutes. You have to complete all three questions in 35 minutes. And the other two, the uh, figured base part writing question is suggested 15 minutes time. And the Roman numeral part writing question is suggested 10 minutes time. I, I think probably some people take a little bit more time with figured base or a little bit more time with Roman numerals uh, just to get things all right because you're writing in four parts. So if you can shave some time off of this suggested 20 minutes, I think it would be a really, really good thing to do. All right, so now let's practice. And we're going to look now at the 2019 free response question seven. And this one was in the key of E flat major, as you can see. And I'm we're gonna write this one. If you wanna, if you wanna uh, stop and take a, screenshot of that, you can. And so I'm going to write it with you here, if you've got it, or you can just watch. So once again, this is an E flat. One thing that I didn't do on, on the one that we looked at from 2021 is I didn't sing the melody in my mind. And you can't sing it out loud on the AP exam, but I like to sing it. So, so this one would be like this. Do, so, la, ti, do, la, so, fa, mi. La, ti, do, re, do, do, ti. See, that should give you a big clue about that cadence. Do, ti, la, so, mi, re, fi, so. Another big clue. So la so fa mi fa mi re do. Wow, I know I'm not in E flat. You know, it went pretty low. Okay, so let's start and plug in all of the things that we've talked about. I like to go to this phrase down here, this last one, and write a P A C there. Okay, so I'm going to write a P A C at this particular cadence point. And guess what? It is a mi, re, do ending, 
or if, or you can think in scale degrees, it is a three, two, one ending. So I don't think twice. I just think once, and I immediately write under that a one six four. Okay, and I and I want to show you one thing more about this chord. Okay, this is a dominant functioning chord, and really, it it should be this. This tells the function of it better. You know, it's a five, and then six four. Let me try that again. It's not very good. Okay, a five and six, four, there we go, dash, five, three. Didn't get the five, three very good either. So let me keep trying, okay? It's not quite the same as writing on a piece of paper, okay? Five, three. And then we'll just bracket that like this because that is a dominant functioning chord. Five, six, four to five, three. But we'll write it as a one, six, four there. And then this is a five chord. Doesn't need to be a seven chord. And this is a one. So we have gotten our perfect authentic cadence uh, done on that last phrase. So we're up to about two points. Now I'm going to back up this time because what I see right there is phi. Okay, so it's phi to sol, like that. And that means that that note right there is the raised fourth scale degree. And so this is suggesting a secondary dominant chord. So we're going to write five of five to a five. And the notes are going to be then that that note right there, as I mentioned earlier, that's the third of the secondary dominant chord. So that's an F as the root of the chord. So I'm going to write an F right here. And then we're going to go to a B flat. And I'm going to go down to the B flat down here. And I'm writing all the stems down. Doesn't matter. You could write it up uh, like that melody is written, you know, in the other bass line. But I think in four part writing, so I write all the stems up on the soprano and all the stems down on the bass. So that's where I'm writing bass stems down. Okay, so we've got that cadence done. And, uh, you know, we could look in front of that right now and look at that note. And it's an F. And so uh, F. That's the scale degree one, uh, scale degree two, I mean, uh, because we're in E flat major. I was still thinking in F major from the last one. So that's scale degree two. So that's a great chord to write there. Let's just write a two chord right in front of that five of five, a two to a five of five. And I'm going to write it in root position. So I'm going to write another F like that. And then I think I can, we'll be able to connect up pretty well to that. Okay. Now I go to the third cadence that we have to write. And if we write that whole measure, we're going to be totally done with this second phrase because they give you the first half of it. And so this ends on a T and this is Re, Re, T, like that. And so. What are we going to write under there? A five chord. Yes, absolutely. A five chord. And then approached sensibly a one or a two or a four. Well, two or two or four is not going to fit because that's a one. So I could put a one right there in front of the five. But if I back up one more, there's another E flat. So what I'm thinking is I can write uh, with that E flat, I could write. Uh, a four chord, for example. So E, F, G, A, that would be an A flat, C, E flat chord. So I'm going to write a four to a five. And then, of course, I'm going to back up and write a one for that first E flat and, or, or, you know, that, that one right there. Okay. And so with that said, I'm going to write E flat. And then I'm going to write A flat. And then I'm going to write B flat, half note. 
okay? And, and sometimes, you know, you may need to do some erasing on your own paper, like I'm doing, because you've got to write those notes perfectly where they're on the line or whatever. Okay, so now that's a half cadence and that's worth two points, I'm telling you. So, so we might even be up to almost four points by now. In fact, we might be up to four points. And the next thing, of course, then is to complete the phrases. Can we start this one on a one? We can. So this is going to be a one. And then can we, can we follow tonic, predominant, dominant, tonic? Okay, can we follow tonic, predominant, dominant, tonic? Well, let's see. Uh, that, that could be A flat C, that, that can be a four chord. So that's predominant. Could we have a five chord? Oh yeah, we could because that that's, let me put this a little farther to the left. Okay, because that's a, a B flat. So B flat is root of the five chord. And then G, that's in the E flat chord. So we could have that. So yes, tonic, predominant, dominant, tonic. So we're gonna write E flat, A flat, all root position, B flat, and E flat. I'm trying to go fast here. Those stems are kind of crooked and everything else, but hopefully you can read them well. And then we've already written the rest of the third phrase. Can we start the fourth phrase on a one chord? We can, because it's B flat. So I'm gonna do this, whoops, I'm gonna do this. I'm going to go one, but I'm gonna put it in a first inversion because I'm gonna start this low and go in contrary motion. So I'm gonna use a G right there rather than an E flat, okay? And then, can I have a four chord? I can, okay, we've got a four chord there. Can I have a five chord? B flat, I can. Okay, that's a passing tone. Over here, that's a passing tone. And then can I have, ooh, this is, the, this is another one of those places where I think that I'm gonna use a six chord because a six, you know, that would be the note C. And so C, E, G, that would work out pretty well. So a six chord there, and then I'm gonna have a two, six right here because I think I'm just gonna, rather than do an F, I'm gonna use that A flat right there. Okay, so this would be like this. This, may, this is gonna make a very nice bass line, A flat, B flat, root position chords, C, root position, A flat, that's, there's our first inversion two chord, which, which is, you know, uh, F, A flat, C, and then I forgot to over here write our bass line in. This is so, so, do up to E flat like that, B flat up to there. Okay, and there is our thing. And I don't know how long that took, but I know it didn't take 20 minutes. I hope I'm probably running out of time here. So what I want to do is let's let's go and look at this in its final and, and hear it, you know, so that we can see what that baseline sounds like. So here is the finished one, and it sounds like this. I think it's a nice sound. It's it it has some some disjunct places, but it really works out pretty nicely.
Okay, so what should we take away from our discussion today? First of all, melodic harmonization, in my opinion, is the upside down of part writing from given bass lines. Whoops. The same principles and guidelines for part writing also apply to melodic harmonization. The harmony is either prescribed by given bass lines from figure bass symbols or Roman numerals, or it is suggested by the melody and can be creative based on style. The exercise studied today is based on style of the 18th century, music of the common practice. Here are the questions I pose to you. Do you understand harmonic progression in music of the common practice? Do you know how to use and write cadences? Do you understand the principles of voice leading? And finally, can you spell the chords correctly? If so, I think success will be yours. So I hope you got a good review or maybe you learned some new things today that will help you with this question. I look forward to seeing you again. So I will see you next time.